EA Sports, it's in the game. You talk about a big play, hey, you don't get any bigger than that. presentation of EA Sports from the Coliseum in Oakland, our tribute to the coach, the John Madden Legacy Game. I'm Brandon Gaughan here to take you through the proceedings, and coming up, we're going to tell the story of a man who was truly larger than life and whose impact on the sport of football certainly is going to live on for decades and decades to come. Now, we've assembled a couple of rosters featuring some of Coach's favorite players from both yesterday and today, and Coach himself will be on the sidelines for both squads, trying to motivate his guys to victory. And I'm joined now by my good friend Charles Davis. CD, your thoughts on John Madden and what he meant to the sport he loved so much. For me, Brandon, it's the word joy. He brought that to the game of football, brought the game to so many people. He stayed involved his entire life, and moving forward, when you think of football, you're always going to think John Madden. The Coliseum back to its original 70s glory. What a scene in the East Bay. And we're underway in the John Madden Legacy game. And that one bounces out of the back of the end zone. So we'll start the drive at the 25 on the touchback. So it's the NFC Stars who will get the ball first. And Charles, as we alluded to, we've got a different era of coach on each sideline. So the man coaching this NFC squad, we'll call him Young John Madden. This is a coach who was trying to establish a foothold in the NFL and on the cusp of doing it very successfully. Yeah, you think back to that period, those early days as the coach of the Raiders, the late 60s in the AFL and then in the NFL in the early 70s. Coach was a guy who was ahead of his time. The Raiders were one of the first teams to have mini camps, one of the first to film practice because he wanted to practice coaching as much as he could. And his teams, they were successful right from the start of his head coaching tenure. Play action, it's far and incomplete. So as we mentioned at the top, well, let's take you through the life of John Madden. And you know, it's very fitting that we're here back in the Bay Area, not just because John's so associated with Raider football, but also because this was where he spent his formative years. Yeah, he grew up over Daly City with his buddy John Robinson, who will also become an NFL head coach. And he played his high school ball at Jefferson High. Eventually wound up playing tackle at the University of Oregon and later Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Played well enough that in 1958, he was a 21st round draft pick of the Philadelphia Eagles. That's right, the draft had 30 rounds then. So on fourth down, here's the Australian native Mitch Wish. And they're going to fake it from deep in their own territory. Oh, and this turns into a mess as it's intercepted. Picked off by Stefan Gilmore. So 
Charles, as mentioned, we've got another Coach Madden over here on the AFC sideline. Of course, his Raiders, members of the AFC West. So this is a conference he battled in for his entire career. And you think about the landscape of the NFL as he was getting into the back half of his tenure. It was a golden era for coaches. You had Don Shula, Tom Landry, Chuck Knoll, Bud Grant. But it was John Madden who had the best winning percentage of them all, CD. 759, the best ever. Brandon, it's hard to believe he could be so successful in a conference with all those great teams. The Steelers won four Super Bowls. The Dolphins won two and were a mainstay in the playoffs. The Colts were tough. The Broncos came on late and went to a Super Bowl themselves. But against Hall of Fame coaches, John Madden's record, 36-16-2. That's pretty incredible. His Raiders were a factor each and every year. Now Charles, you mentioned Coach was a 21st-round draft pick back in 1958. It was the Philadelphia Eagles who selected him. But unfortunately for John, knee problems, they just continued to dog him. He was hurt in his first training camp. Actually never saw the field as a player in the NFL. But it was still during his time with the Eagles. You and I were talking about this before going on air, that you could start to see the light bulb going on for what his career path might entail. And it went on in a big way, didn't it? Because while he was rehabbing his knee, he started to spend a lot of time breaking down film with the Eagles with quarterback Norm Van Brocklin, the future Hall of Famer and future head coach in the NFL. Remember, Norm Van Brocklin coached with the Falcons, he coached with the Vikings. It was there during that time. I think Coach Madden realized his love of football and love for teaching, combining all that together, and that meant being a football coach. So in 1960, began his coaching career at a small college south of San Luis Obispo called Alan Hancock, and then later at San Diego State University under another legendary coach, the guy who could throw it around pretty well, Don Coriel. How about that strategy there, Brandon? Third down, they just said, we've got faith in our tacklers. We'll give you the short stuff and just decided to protect the sticks. So every time I hear fans telling me tackling's not a part of the game anymore, plays like that, I can clip and save and show them you have to tackle well if you want to be a good defense. So well done there. And these punters, they get more specialized and better each and every year, don't they? They sure do. And now it's really not the American punters. It's the Australian punters with their kicking academies and that flat drop and just kind of kicking the nose of the football. They're able to almost stop it where they want to like a good golfer can check one up. The NFC offense coming out here, and you know, Charles, Coach Madden always said that if he had one drive to win a game and he had to pick a quarterback, he would pick Kenny Stabler. But I think if you asked him to omit any of his Raiders players, there's a good chance the guy he'd select would be Brett Favre. Brett Favre is always smiling. He's always laughing. He's always talking to someone. He remembers that it's a game. And if it's a game, you should have fun. And Brandon, that always reminds me of a great movie line where one of the players was telling the coach, every time I say it's a game, you say it's a business. And every time I say it's a business, you say it's a game. With coach, it was always a game. On first and 10, it's Sanders. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. And Charles, you know, it was in the early 1960s at a young... Time to do